So we've conquered the moon by successfully landing a spacecraft to the south pole of the moon. ISRO now is all set to launch Aditya L1 that's going to be observing all solar activity coming in from the sun. It's going to be a travel of 1.5 million kilometers from here, from Sri Harikota, all the way to the Lagrange point of L1. Sneha Mordani explains exactly what I'm talking about when I say Lagrange point 1. And what is it that ISRO really has done by choosing this particular point for its mission? Riding high on Chandrayaan 3 successful landing, ISRO is now gearing up for the next cosmic quest. Aditya L1 mission is what we are talking about. This is ISRO's first solar mission. We're talking about India's feet on the moon, eyes now on the sun. Let's talk about this particular mission, Aditya L1, which like I said, is ISRO's India's first solar mission. The vehicle first. Aditya L1 is going to be hitching a ride on India's heavy-duty launch vehicle, which is the PSLV XL. The PSLV XL weighs 320 tons and the height is 44.4 meters. The PSLV XL is a four-stage vehicle with multiple satellite launch capabilities and multiple orbit capabilities. Just take a look at how this essentially is going to take off and place Four, itself three, on the two, sun's halo one. orbit. And lift off. What then is the Lagrange point, now named after Joseph Louis Lagrange, a French mathematician who first studied them in the 18th century. The Lagrange points are points in space where the gravitational forces of two large bodies such as the sun and the earth balance out, creating a region of equilibrium. Now these points in space can be used by spacecraft to reduce fuel consumption needed to remain in position. There are five of them, L1, L2, L3, L4, and L5. L1 is about 1.5 million kilometers from the Earth, or approximately 1% of the Earth-Sun distance. It is essentially the vantage point. Let's talk about the journey to L1. Well, after being placed in a low Earth orbit by ISRO's PSLV XL rocket, the orbit is going to be more made more elliptical, and spacecraft will be launched towards L1 point by using on-board propulsion. As the spacecraft travels towards L1, it will exit Earth's gravitational sphere of influence, or SOI. After the exit, cruise phase will start and craft will be injected into a large halo orbit around L1. It is going to take four months for the spacecraft to reach its destination. So why are we studying the sun? The sun, remember, is the nearest star and therefore can be studied in much more detail as compared to other stars, for example. Now, by studying the sun, we can learn much more about stars in our Milky Way as well as about stars in various other galaxies. Sun's explosive solar phenomena, if directed towards the Earth, could cause various types of disturbances in the near-Earth space environment. To learn about and track Earth-directed storms and to predict their impact, continuous solar observations are required. Every storm that emerges from the sun and heads towards Earth passes through L1. Various thermal and magnetic phenomena on the sun are of extreme nature. Thus, the sun also provides a good natural lab to understand those phenomena which can't be directly studied in any other lab. What then are the main objectives of this solar mission? The spacecraft carries seven payloads designed to study the sun's atmosphere and its interaction with the solar wind. The mission is aimed at studying the super high temperatures of solar corona, the dynamics of solar system and the solar temperature non-uniformity. It will also study and evaluate the main drivers of space weather. Let's now talk about Aditya L1 science payloads here. Now, of the seven payloads, four will directly study the sun and the remaining three will in situ carry out in situ studies of particles and fields at the Lagrange point at the L1. The science payloads of Aditya L1 are indigenously developed by different labs in the country. With a billion people praying for ISRO's success in unison, the countdown to Mission Sun has officially begun. 